In this example problem, we're going to find the nominal capacity of the given section uh, that's um, shown here. Uh, for this problem, we'll first need our strain and stress diagrams. Uh, so I, I have them drawn here already. Um, where you can see we're going to use the rectangular stress block approximation. Um, so the first thing that we'll do is set our compression equal to tension. We'll start by assuming that our steel has yielded. So um, we'll assume that ES is greater than um, our uh, yield strain. So we'll assume that we have a yield a stress for our steel here. We'll then have um, our compression block on our compression side and our uh, the force from our yielded steel on our tension side. We can then solve for C, uh, which I've done, and we can plug in our values. So we'll have our area of steel is 6.75. Our yield stress is 60 KSI divided by 0 0.85 times 4 KSI concrete times our beta 1 for 4 KSI is 0.85. Remember, this will change with different strengths of concrete. And our B is 12 inches. So we'll find our C to be 11.68 inches. Uh, we'll next need to use our strain diagram and our similar triangles to find the actual str uh, strain in our steel um, at this point. So uh, I've done that already here and rearranged it for epsilon s, and we can plug in our values then. So we'll have 0.003 times d minus c divided by c. And this will give us a strain of 0 0.00162. So this is less than our yield strain, which is 0 0.0021, which we can remember is just our yield stress divided by our modulus elasticity for our steel. Uh, so since we aren't yielded, um, since we're less than yield, our initial assumption is no good. So we need to um, reanalyze our section and calculate or reanalyze our section, finding the actual um, strain in our steel at the nominal failure. So we, we can start by finding an expression to re represent our steel stress um, in terms of C. Uh, so we do this by using Hooke's Law and then plugging in our uh, expression, which we found earlier, for our steel strain. Um, so we can plug in our, our values here. So we know that we have 0 0.003 times 29,000 KSI, and then times D, 18 inches, minus C over C. And we'll leave C in, in uh, variable form for now. And then this will just be equal to 87 times 18 minus C over C. Next, we can go back to uh, equilibrium, so compression equal to tension. Uh, nothing changes on our compression side. That'll be the same. Um, and on our tension side, we'll now just use the, um, the st steel stress expression from above instead of the yield stress. Uh, so we can start plugging in all of our values. So we have 0.85 times F prime C for KSI times our beta 1 for F prime C is 0.85. We'll leave C in variable form. Our B is 12 inches equal to the area of our steel, 6.75 square inches, and then our FS expression. So 87 times 18 minus C divided by C. So this then is just going to be um, 34.68 C equal to 587.25 
times 18 minus c divided by c. We can then multiply through by c and rearrange to give us a quadratic. So we'll have 34.8c squared plus 587.25c minus 1 or 10,570.5 equal to 0. And then solving this quadratic, we'll get our c equal to 10.94 inches, which we'll use in our next step. So we'll next need to check um, the actual strain in our steel. So we'll use the same expression that we've been using, so 0 0.003 times d minus c divided by c. And we'll get our steel strain to be 0 0.00194. Uh, so we can see that this is less than our yield strain, so we know we're not yielded, so our, our assumptions are OK here. Uh, we can then use this um, strain to find our stress in our steel. So 29,000 KSI times our strain in our steel. And we'll get the stress to be 56.1 KSI. So we can use this stress and our C value then to find our nominal moment. So our nominal moment uh, will take or we'll find by summing moments about the centroid of our compression block. Um, so we'll have one force component and one lever arm. So uh, I wrote that out already, but so our force component is from our steel. So the area of our steel, 6.75 square inches. The stress in our steel, which we just found, 56.1 KSI, and then times our D, 18 inches minus beta 1 for 4 KSI is 0.85, and then C, 10.94, divided by 2, and we'll find our nominal moment uh, to be equal to 5,065 kip inches. Uh, we can also find our nominal curvature by taking our 0 0.003 uh, divided by C. So we're finding our curvature in there. And we'll find our curvature at this point to be 2.74 times 10 to the negative fourth. Uh, radians per inch. So these would be our, our final answers here. Uh, so this is how you can find the nominal moment and nominal curvature for a section if uh, you find out that your um, steel doesn't yield.